Amazing band. Gold in the Air of Summer. I chose that one because we finally had a, a nice day in England. I don't know where you are in the world, but we've had a terrible year. I don't want to be that bloke that complains, but it's been shit. And people say, oh, it's good for the farmers. They need a bit of sunshine too, though, don't they? It's not, they don't just want six months of rain. What are they farming? Mold. I'm a mold farmer. Um, I'm a farmer, apparently, sort of officially, because I own a, an orchard and a distillery, because a Dutch barn, in a war, I could say I can't, I can't fight. I've got to go and <laughs> turn apples into ethanol. I don't know what war would ever want me now. Maybe 40 years ago. Um, I don't even know if this is working because it doesn't come up anymore. It just tells me how many people are watching. But I, it hasn't got all the little things before because I think you have to be a... Don't you have to join you just to ask a question or something? I don't know. Something stupid. I don't understand it anymore. Um, I mean, I could check. Why don't, I, why don't I check that I'm actually broadcasting? I'll go on my laptop and see if I'm actually broadcasting. I'll be all out of time, won't I? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, it's going out. It's it's happening. <laughs> Good. I, do you remember I did it once? For half an hour. And it wasn't broadcasting. <laughs> Fucking annoying. <laughs> I mean, it's already a waste of time. So to waste that time, I mean, it's a, it's a double fucking waste of time. Um, my red face. I caught the sun a bit, didn't I? Played tennis. Yeah. Yeah, I've been eating peanuts. That's why I'm doing that. I'm not prepared for TV, am I? That woman got in trouble for doing that. I'd just be on there reading the news like that. Yeah. More stabbings. Inflation. Earthquake. Um, right, let's get through the questions. Uh, I'll put it over that side for a change. Sam B. If you could only listen to one artist or band for the rest of your life, who would it be? Oh, that's too hard. Because it wouldn't matter who it was. Was it like the first one that sprang to mind, David Bowie. But if I could only listen to David Bowie, it would still send me mental. You'd need someone with a massive catalogue who maybe changed, lots of different so I mean he's I mean he's like prime contender, I'd have thought. Uh, one that's never let me there's a few that Dylan, Bob Dylan, Neil Young. I mean, all the things I listen to anyway. And I've never stopped listening to those. Cat Stevens. Um, so yeah, I suppose I could radio head maybe. Uh, oh, tricky. Oh God. I'd just be thinking, of the, I'd go, oh, I wish I'd, Whoever it was, you go, oh. Uh, oh. That's too difficult. I'll go David Bowie. But whoever it is, you'd... That is the beauty, isn't it, of variety and choice. That makes me laugh when people used to complain about there's too many channels on TV. You don't have to watch them. Oh no, there's 200 channels. Yeah, just w watch the one you're like, oh don't, better still don't fucking watch. Isn't telly shit? Isn't ordinary telly shite now? God, blimey. I, I think the only thing I watch on terrestrial telly, The Chase, where one of those with titty. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that's it. I watched The Apprentice when it was on. I just watched Netflix every night or or some sort of streaming or, you know, there's, there's no reason to just sit in front of a telly and have no choice anymore. Um, I think everyone agrees with me. Julia C Campbell. Have you watched Kin? Talking to telly. Um, I think it's fantastic, especially the second series. Uh, I haven't, but it's on the list. It might even be next. We're just finishing something off. Um, do you have any new programme recommendations? Well, this year, um, I think maybe, I don't know why, uh, it might have been a mixture of COVID, the writer strike. There seemed to be less new stuff. So um, I watched uh, Borgen from the beginning, all like five series and the 10 years later. And we watched uh, the Bureau from the beginning, and that that you know gave us a couple of months. I just oh, um, last really really good new thing I watched is a thing called Deliver Me, a Swedish sort of crime drama, but more really good. Always watching the original. I I just I mean. I, I don't think I've watched an English speaking series for years now. Always watching the original language, never watched dubbed. It's they're unwatchable dubbed. So watch uh, Deliver Me. I think it's Netflix. Uh watched a good um documentary the other night, uh Football Fraudster. About this guy who pretends to be like, you know, superstar sportsman. Cons people, always good. Like the sort of Tinder swindler type thing. They're always good. Um, and this one's, there's this, there's this psychiatrist that sort of analyzes it and, you know, tells you what he's like and how he gets away with it. Really good. Um, yeah, so uh, Kin is on the list. I have heard good things about that. Uh, Taco King. What's your favourite line you've ever written? Oh, that's impossible as well. I've written a lot of lines. The first one I thought of then, and this is from the early days where people say, what's your favourite line from The Office, was probably, I think there's been a rape up there. Um, but I've written a lot since. And it's all about context as well. That's a funny line because of what's happening. Brent wanting to be the centre of attention. He's trying to win by just, it, it, it's all context. That Any line by itself is nothing. It depends what's happening. Um, uh, unless it's a one-liner. So maybe something from a stand-up or, but I like lot, there's lots of lines I like. I, I, um, you know, uh, like from Afterlife. Uh, I'd rather be nowhere with her than somewhere without her. There's lines that I'm sort of proud of, but it's all contextual. Um, some stand-up lines, maybe. Lines from the Golden Globe, because they're so standalone. They've got to be, like, just perfect one-off. Um, uh, what, what, what that were? I like the um, one from the last one, when I said to them all, if ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent. <laughs> when I say they spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So they're sort of like, I suppose they're good standalone lines. Uh, I think the first, first, one of the first lines I ever wrote for the Golden Globes when I knew I was doing it was, um, uh, I like a drink as much as the next man. Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. Uh, that's hard, that one. Keena, do you ever plan on writing a book? I, I assume you mean a novel. I've written children's books and, you know, script books and Brent's song book. But 
they don't count, they're too easy. But have I ever considered writing a 100,000 word novel? God, blimey, that's too hard. I mean, the answer is yes, but then I go, it's too hard. <laughs> I, uh, I did think about it. Uh, I remember when I was sort of 18, 19, 20 and I was thinking of doing things. You know what I mean? You you, you, you want to be a, a pop star and an astronaut and a, a novelist and all those things that you think of, an artist, all those things you dabble in. You go, nah, I'm not right or it's too hard or you find something you like more. So at early days I might have. I remember when um, I was on the dole and I must have thought about writing a novel because I went to, I used to go to the library every day. I used to go to museums and libraries and, you know, spend my time thinking I've got to do something, either get fit or learn something. And I used to go to the library every day. And I remember looking at uh, how to write a novel, one of those books, how to write a novel. And it just ended up annoying me. Um, and it made me decide if I ever did write a novel, what my first line would be, because this book annoyed me. It was quite a stuffy old book. I think it was one of those books that was written in the 50s or 60s. I, I, I don't know. But I remember, I, I, I sort of, I skim read it in the low, and it said, it said, never start a novel describing the weather. Right? And it said, never start a novel with swearing. And that made me decide that if I ever did write a novel, the first sentence was going to be, it was raining like a cunt. Just because that book annoyed me. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, yeah. I do this thing with Jane, right, we're walking down the street, right, and there's just a really sweet, old lady or man, like really sort of, you know, classic, like 95, bent double, can hardly walk. I go to Jane, what's this cunt playing at? Like that, right? <laughs> to annoy her or make her laugh, right? And, uh, And now I've got it that I can say it at the last minute. So it panics Jane. They never hear it, right? But I can even do it without looking. So just Jane can hear and it panics her. This person does. I can do it without moving my, moving my lips now. I can go, what's this cunt doing? Uh, what's this cunt doing? <laughs> it's a skill, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, God. There's something wrong with me. Um, Karen. How do you like writing and recording your Dutch barn vodka ads? I love it. Is that a nice addition to your other project? Yeah. It's sort of like... It's sort of like a sideline, but it's also a full-time job. So... I'm sort of doing three full-time jobs at the moment. I'm working up a tour... Um, I'm writing and gonna de I'm de de developing a show for Netflix and I'm trying to make Dutch Barn Vodka a global brand. And so I'm thinking about one of them all the time. I've had to do like 20 minutes on each to get me through the day so I don't go mental. Um, but yeah, it's still good because it's so creative and I can sort of, I, yeah, it's great. I'm doing some more soon and, um, I just want it to be different and be silly and, uh, you know, I'm just raising awareness at the moment. So you just want people to see the name and think, oh, that's, that's quite nice. It's not sort of like finesse marketing. It's me fucking about at the moment. Um, but yeah, I really, yeah, I really enjoy it. I like it. I even like... I even like the restrictions. I like sort of trying to beat the system. What can I get away with? What's allowed, but that still pushes 
the envelope and it's sort of exciting to do. Um, so yeah, we're like that. Dutch barn. Uh, what's this one? Andy Hughes. If you weren't rich and famous, what job do you think you'd be doing? What was I doing? Oh, well, I was... Well, what was I doing? I was sort of in entertainment, so I was... I mean, I couldn't be still doing... I couldn't be an entertainment manager at my age. That would be a bit... That would be a bit much, wouldn't it? <laughs> Organising fucking drill discos. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Um, well, the last real job I had, I suppose, was at the radio station, which is on the cusp, isn't it, of a real job and popping up on air. So I'd probably be doing a normal job but I might still be, I might be popping up on local radio or, I don't know, or doing the odd stand-up gig. Because before I was doing this sort of professionally, when I had a real job, I was thinking of doing the odd bit of stand-up as an outlet. So, I don't know. And would I have been doing business things and do it being an entrepreneur and... I don't know. Um, uh, I'd be, I'd still be doing something that was like quite fun and interesting. I hope. I don't know. Or go the other way, and uh, well, I mean, those are things. Are, you know, I could be a landscape gardener. I like gardening, and that's so difficult. I mean, I wouldn't have. I don't think I'd have really trained and or anything like that or gone back into science or uh, I'd probably have a podcast wouldn't I because everyone with normal jobs now would do it. so I'd be I'd have a normal job and hopefully I'd be doing a podcast and being me but people would be going who the fuck is he that's all I just wouldn't be I just wouldn't be rich and famous, but I'd still be me, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I? Be a bit weird, wouldn't it? If I was me, but not rich and famous, and I still said all the stupid fucking things, they'd just think I was mental. Because at the moment they can go, oh, he's a, he's a comedian. Oh, he's rich and famous, he can get away with that. <laughs> that was just a bloke going around saying these fucking stupid things. People go, keep away from him, he's, he's, he's mental. He's actually mental. Um, Ash, what would you like to be in the next life? A frog, a chimp, or an elephant, and why? Well, I wouldn't want to be a frog, because I wouldn't know I was a frog, would I? I'd just be a, I might as well be a, a rock. That Frogs don't sit around thinking, oh, I have a nice worm today. They don't think, do they? They've got no... I mean, that's like not existing, isn't it, really? For me to choose, I mean. It's fine if you're a frog, being a frog. But it would be a... I think... I love animals, but... I think that would be a little bit of a... A come down. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like imagine... I can't imagine not thinking, so... A, a elephant or... Chimp. I mean, the chimp is the one to choose, isn't it? Because it's the closest thing to humanity. Because I imagine, I imagine elephants and chimps sort of introspect a bit. They're aware of, they're intelligent, aren't they? And they have emotions. And I think I'd have to choose chimp because it's the closest thing to what I can imagine being. I think. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be a frog. Just pick, being picked up by someone and you go, oh, fuck, they're a biology teacher. Oh, I'm fucked. I am absolutely fucked. I hate that. Um, Chloe, any news on when you'll take your new material on tour? And I hope that hat wasn't one of your favourites. 
It was, you know, Pickle likes destroying my hat. It was one of my favourites. But I, it, it's one of these, right? This isn't the one. This is a, a newer version. She's got an older one. I've got three of these. I play tennis in them. They are my favourite hat because they're really soft and stretchy, right? They're just great. They're my favourite. Um, I don't know if Head are watching. One, these, these are the best caps ever. They're so comfortable and soft. They're the only like, the ones I like wearing. You don't do them in black. That's one thing. Do, do them in black. I think you only do them in grey, white and blue, which is fine. I, I, I would have chosen black, but they're so good. I I'd, I'd have them in other colours than my favourite colour. So, yeah. Keep that away from her, though, so she can't destroy that one as well. Um... That was like an advert, wasn't it? For head, I should have, I should get some money for that, or at least a lifetime supply of hats. Um, oh, I could just buy some more. I think they're fifteen quid. <laughs> um, any news on when you take a tour? Yeah, I mean it's happening. I've done about forty or fifty new material nights, honing it. I've um, got about 50 minutes now. It got it got to 45 really quickly. And I was sort of adding stuff. But when you've got a really good sort of 45 and you add some up, it stands out as not very good. So you go, oh, fuck, that's ruined the 40. You know what I mean? You, you lose your nerve a little bit. Also, when you've got 45 and you get better at that 45, you sort of do it faster and you, you hone it and it goes back to 43. You've got to put another bit in. So I've cracked the 50 minute mark. And when I've got a definite 60, I'll put tickets on sale and I reckon, I reckon I'll do my first full fat, full ticket price gig in a theatre. September, October, October. And I'll do, I'll do theatres up till Christmas. Then I'll start doing arenas in UK and Europe and I'll do all my favourite places and America I'll do you know the usual I think I'll do this I think I'll do the Hollywood Bowl again New York all all the my favourite European capitals and all that get that done Netflix have already uh, I can't say too much but you were you were you will be watching it either live or on Netflix. That's all I say. Um, Ollie Afterlife, congratulations on your huge success with Dutch Barn Vodka and Can of Water. Right? He's reeled me in there. He's flattered me. Thank you. This is the question though. Would you rather have penises for fingers or 10 fingers on your penis, not even instead of. So hold on, right, let's get this right. So I've got knobs, right? I've got knobs for fingers, just fucking, I assume, flaccid, flaccid knobs. I can't do fucking anything with them. They're just, I mean, can I pick things up? It's like one of those things at the fair, where you, I'd try to pick things up, but it'd be like that, wouldn't it? If they were erect, I suppose I could. But that's mad, isn't it? Going round, going round, with ten erections on display. That is fucking horrible. Ten knobs. It just can't be that one. I mean, I've already decided. But let's look at the. Okay, let's look at what I've chosen. Ten fingers on my knob. So I've got my knob, and then what? Just ten fingers coming out of it. Are they fingers though, real fingers? So I could pick things up with my knob. Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible, right? They're both terrible. So, don't hate me. I can't go around with ten knobs out. That's just disgusting. People are going, 
Do you know what I mean? It's got ten no it's got ten knobs. I can't shake hands with anyone. That'd be <laughs> so <laughs> be horrible. I've got just wear gloves. Just wear gloves all the time and can't pick anything up. Just pick it like that. That bloke always wears gloves. Yeah. Wonder why. Doesn't doesn't matter why. <laughs> it's got to be ten fingers coming out of my knobs because I just I don't know. Just keep them in my pants and. Oh. It starts with great congratulations on a huge success with Dutch Barn vodka and can of water. I've ten ten fingers on my penis. There. I've made my decision. Jeannie, could you take a week's vacation and not think about work? No. No. I don't think we've had a proper vacation, vacation, you know, a week somewhere, walking, sitting on the beach, I don't know, for 30 odd years. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I'd do it now. I don't think I'd like it. Well, one, I, I never really... I, I just I, I can't do one of those when you just sit around the pool or for a week. Um, I, I like I'd like a couple of days off. I like I like it when we you know I do a gig and I have like you know forty hours off and I do a gig. That's nice. That's a little break. But I just don't think I can't do anything and not think of work. I mean, I could enjoy. I can join not actually having work. I like, you know, I'd love a day off to mooch around and do what I want. I'd like a, a, a doing things holiday, you know, a, a, a tennis holiday or a, you know, I don't know, a windsurfing holiday, I suppose. But I think a week's even too long for that. A couple of days of that, a couple of days sitting around. I mean, I, I just think I'd use it to think of stuff and come up with new things. That's what, that is my favourite thing, having time to create. So it would be impossible now, I couldn't do that. I could do it, with, you know, I could not be on the phone, but I'd still be thinking of work and thinking of ideas. Um, Monsieur Dougal. Um, bon, bonjour, Monsieur Ricky. Uh, do you have a tool belt and what's your favourite hand tool? I don't have a tool belt, but I like the idea of one. I'd like it to be like a bat belt, though. It wouldn't just be for DIY, it'd be for everything, wouldn't it? Um, Favourite hand tool? It's got to be... It's got to be an axe or a hammer, because they also double up as a weapon. So, knocking nails in. Smashing burglars in the face. Axe, lovely. Oh, I love an axe. It's great, isn't it? I love all going museums when you see the medieval axes and Viking axes. We saw one axe that was like an axe with a pointy bit. So you could go, do I smash his face in or poke him in the eye? Um, they feel right as well, don't they? The axe or the, 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 the little axe, the little axe and, the, and the claw hammer. It's my favourite tool. <laughs> Where the term tooled up comes from. I mean, the chisel. It's great. I, I, I watch those videos when they're just like making things. Just a real good craftsman just making some. A dovetail joint, you know. I love all that. Just restoring a table. I love all that. I just can't do it though. Well, I probably could if I put the effort, and it's possible. I have the capability, I guess. If I, you know, if I did a year's training. <laughs> no, I love, I love, I love good workmanship. I think it's great. But I haven't got the, the patience or the skill. Um, yeah. When, uh, talking of weaponry, when Jane ever asked me, she says, oh, it's your birthday soon. Give me a list of ideas. I, I do a thing like um, knuckle duster, shoe with retractable blade, <laughs> <laughs> walking stick that's a sword. She goes, oh, seriously. 
What do you want? Um, individual drone, jetpack. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? What another load of bollocks that's been. Thanks very much for following. Thanks for retweeting everything. Thanks for uh, helping animal charities. Thanks for buying Dutch Barn Vodka. People say, go away and get it, right? I think it's in all the... It's in most places that, that you know, they might be sold out or there might not be one near you, but it's in Sainsbury's and Tesco's and Costco and all, all that, right? But you just get it online. Just Google it. Get it online from the website. Is it is it that 22 quid somewhere with a nectar card, Sainsbury's? You get it from Thresher's? Just order it online, just order one. It looks lovely. Look at that. I'm using it as that looks like an award. You don't have to drink it. <laughs> What's the point of that? Um and can of water. Saving the planet. Saving the planet, getting it drunk. Saving the planet, getting it drunk. Well this is saving a bit of the planet, isn't it? Because this is quite you know, ethical and hundred percent recyclable bottle. All that. Uh, can of water we've even moved the um, where we get the water from to the UK to help the carbon footprint saving the planet getting it drunk be nice to animals cheers <laughs> tatty bye everyone tatty bye